we figure what better way than to give a true product review of a brand new product and the product being the brand new this is the carbon rx1 hoyt redworks bow highly highly confidential man i've been so excited to get this bow in my hands i just got it a couple weeks ago i've i've took it to mexico already and um and just put up killing on some javelinas and some hogs but i'm at, and uh i'll be the first to tell you i'm not like the mac daddy technical guru of bows um t-bone who who's on our crew as well as all the engineers at hoyt uh, jeremy eldridge uh, mike looper they're very technical and obviously uh the technicians behind the scenes or the engineers i should call them who come up with these hoyt bows and the, the secrets that they put behind them from the carbon risers to the geometry to the cams to everything that makes them shoot accurate as well as fast as well as very forgiving so it's so hard typically in bows even if you're not a technical guru of all the things that you know that you might can talk shop on on a bow and arrow the one thing that we all know is it's really hard to accommodate everything it's hard to find a bow that's really fast that has a short brace height yet that remains forgiving to shoot so you can get the speed but a lot of times you got a bow that's very uncanny for kind of being throwing a flyer throwing an arrow out there that you who knows where it goes because uh, it, it, it doesn't make up for any of your forgiveness of the way you hold the bow maybe you grip it or torque it um, this bow here is probably by far the most forgiving yet fast bow I've ever shot that Hoyt's come out with I'm in love with it I'm actually just got it sighted in really good and starting to shoot it feel familiar with shoot a few arrows live out here to kind of show you uh, just the quickness of the bow uh, hopefully the accuracy of the bow and and uh, just what we do like about it but you can quickly see in this product review uh, they changed a few things look at this cable system here and the way everything's tied so tight and compact to this they changed the yoke system the ge geometry of things it's it's really cool um, <laughs> like I said I'm not the best guy to tell you a lot of the technical reasons for that but I do know that everything about it is a true center shot bow uh, obviously this bow is not super long axle to axle um, it's actually short which I kind of like um, this bow a lot for that reason because I do a lot of hunting out of ground blinds so obviously I like a bow that I can maneuver around really nice and easy uh, in in the ground blind and so sometimes you get a bow that's you know 35 34 35 inches it gets to be kind of a little bit too much and your cams right on the edge of hitting the top of the top of the uh, the tent um, what I do like about this bow is it's easy to maneuver and it shoots very fast and I'll shoot a few shots at it and uh, this is our little range that I got here on my place that I come out here and shoot and this uh, plethora of targets mostly morels bags I got one morel deer out there then I got some 3d just foam targets on the back side because once I kind of get a both sided in after shooting the dots man I like to go into what feels like gonna be meat so uh, obviously we're not trying to win an ASA tournament but just a typical 30 yard shot on a on a deer this uh, this will shoot it but pay attention to just how quiet this bow is um, it has no vibration to it it's super uh, it's super just thunk man it feels like just a race car it's just a bow that immediately within two or three shots I felt like I'd had it a long time and so uh, I really really like this bow so uh, we'll take a shot right here about 30 35 yards right here You can hear it's super quiet. Uh, this bow is shooting over the chronograph. I think T-Bone's got me at 398. I shoot a 28 inch draw. So that's actually um, a bow that's pretty quick. For a man who's got a short draw length like myself, it actually is pretty darn quick. But even out in further ranges. All right, 50 yards to that back morel. We'll take a shot at that. right in there i mean it's it's a bow what i like about it is it points good it shoots so good and so many times you can get a bow when you pull back and the way the draw stop hits it feels like it's kind of out of control this bow immediately you got enough back tension that when you put it on that dot it just aims so good and it feels like if you, you're on the dot all the time and so for that it just is something that makes me super excited
I'm gonna shoot at that deer over there. All right, 50 yard Pope and Young. Oh. Right there, son, he'd be going home with us. I'm absolutely in love with this new bow. It's the brand new Hoyt. I literally probably got about 100 arrows in this bow, just enough to get it sighted in to feel comfortable with it. But that's live, and so I'm not making no super long shots, but out to 50 yards and just shooting good. And this is a bow that I just started shooting a week ago. Uh, the grip here I really like. I mean, really everything about it I'm really, really in love with. I have decided for the last many years to shoot with a quiver on. Fuse makes some good quivers that are really quiet and kind of out of the way. And I like to keep six in my <laughs> quiver because you never know. A lot of times we go, we can shoot those too. So you get that buck tag feel. You might want to reload and juice you up a big old slick head. And then when you're elk hunting, you never know. I, I just like to have my reloading supplies right handy. And only time it becomes a situation where it's a little bit unfriendly is in a windy conditions when you got all these airs and you're trying to fight the wind. But uh, I like having a quiver on. But uh, if we have any questions, I'll be try, try my best to answer them. If you have any questions about what's going on with Bone Collector, all this brand new Hoyt bow, or really anything, uh, like I said, I like being live, man, so I'd love to answer any questions. Let's see. He got my phone. Let's see. Said it's, said, uh, Logan says it sounds kind of loud. Maybe you're hearing that quiver, or maybe it's the microphone, but actually it's one of the quieter bows that, that I've shot. It's just a thunk, like a, just a, a thunk. But uh, come out to Colorado, Marcus says. Jeremy says, sounds slower than mine. David says, shoot a Matthews. Hey, man, if you're going to do backflips, you got to take the training wheels off. We might want to do backflips. That's why I'm shooting this Hoyt right here. Um, Skeeter Peterson asks, how fast did you say? This bow right now is shooting two, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 298 over the meter. T-Bone shot that for me. T-Bone set that thing up. Not 398, Donald, 298. So right at 300 feet per second. I personally have always felt really comfortable in that wheelhouse between 270 and 300. I know the given bow are the faster bows, but being a 28 inch draw and shooting the FOC and the and the mount, uh, the heavy arrow, the, the heavier arrow that I would want to shoot at 7.9, about eight grams per inch with a 100 grain broadhead. And I usually put 75 grains of brass inserts on the front of these uh, arrows. Um, I, it, it's tough for me to get that 300 feet per second. Um, so this bow actually delivers it. Um, Preston asked if I hunted Kansas this year for if the, and want to know if the rut for the rut because the rut's happening. No, but I'm leaving. We'll be there next week, and I'm so stoked about it, man. I'm hunting the Hooray Ranch. Nick and T-Bone, both of us, got tags out there. We went out in August and hung stands and scouted and some really good deer. So hopefully next week on social media we can kind of show you some of that success. I'm actually anxious. I'm actually nervous. Um, and no, nothing we hunt is high fence. That's a question ain't on there, but good gosh. Every time we put something on, Folks like, oh, it must be easy hunting a deer farm, this and that. My God, I got to where I just respond with every deer I kill is chained to a tree. I mean, we're blessed to hunt some good spots, but we don't hunt high fence to video our TV shows in. We hunt fair chase. So we're going to Kansas next week. Fair chase, deer, and let me tell you, the fair chase out there are unbelievable. It's unbelievable. The amount of resources we got right now everywhere in every state is good, but when you get to Kansas, Iowa, and some of those states, it's unbelievable. Uh, can you use... Can you use a deer shooting target for a decoy? Absolutely, and you can. Um, I mean, obviously, I think so many times people put too much into a deer's IQ. Uh, a deer is just a wild goat. Sometimes you watch the TV shows, you would think, my God, you're hunting a mad scientist. They're just wild, horny goats that's out there trying to feed when they're hungry, and they prefer to move at night, and they got good instincts to avoid, to avoid those things that like to kill them. And obviously, we, the human, we're the top of the food chain, so we're out there just trying to take them and put them back in the truck and eat their back straps. So they're pretty wary, obviously, of human pressure and human scent. But when it gets down to it, they're just something that really wants to breed. They're hungry. They can be manipulated by calls and different things. And uh, and so that's that's what I think is the best way is just to keep it simple. But you can use a, a regular deer decoy, just a regular target. Um, is that Defiant Clint? No, this is not the Defiant. This is the brand new. Uh, last year I did shoot the Carbon Defiant. This is the brand new bow. It just come out. It's a Carbon Riser bow, but it's an RX-1 Redworks. Hoyt just released it. Um, all the pros are shooting it. They, they actually built this bow with a lot of uh, 
not only all their engineers, but people like T-Bone Turner, who has owned a pro shop most of all of his life, uh, who's actually shot competitively. They used a lot of uh, background knowledge and experience to help design this bow. And I do believe, not because I just shoot Hoyt, I do believe it's the absolute best bow that come out on the market this year by far. It's my favorite. It's probably in my top two or three Hoyts of all time that I've ever shot as far as that initial thought process. Um, the Carbon Defiant I liked, but it didn't jump out at me like the Alpha Max did. This bow jumps out at me probably more. If you're a Hoyt fan and shot Hoyt a long time, you remember the first time you shot that Alpha Max, it was like, holy cow. That was the feeling that I got when I shot this Red Works bow. It was like, oh my goodness. I'm not a guy who likes to change. You can talk to any of the Hoyt guys. You know, people uh, talking about getting all the new bows. I'm a guy, if I got something that's working, I really like it. This is a bow that immediately, when I put it in my hands, it immediately represented a good change in the way I shot. I'm shooting better. I like it. I have complete confidence. I mean, I have no problem the way of shooting, the way I'm shooting right now. 60 yards for deer walks out in Kansas, man, I'm going to let it fly. I believe you're only going to kill the deer that you take the shots on. That ain't what I believe. That's a fact. And I've learned that a shot you don't take in life is just a shot you're going to guarantee to miss because you don't take the shot, you're going you're gonna to miss. You never fired an arrow. Um, David said he still got the Alpha Max. Uh, that's a great bow. Do you only hunt northern Missouri or do you get somewhere in southern Missouri any? You know, I've never I've never hunted a lot in Missouri for deer. I've done a lot of turkey hunting in Missouri. I love it. I think it's one of the coolest states out there because you got such a cool rifle season. You got a good rut when it comes to the bow season. We just actually was videoing around St. Louis and uh, it was actually uh, really good. My dad and T-Bone went out there and had a fantastic hunt. And uh, let's see what else we got here. I'm trying to see if I got any more. Chris, hey from the Oregon coast. And we'll walk on out here and pull these arrows. Just to show you live, man, that it did shoot pretty good. Um, what's the price? Caleb, I'll be honest, uh, I don't know the, the suggested retail price on these bows. These carbon bows are a little pricey. They're typically in that $1,200 to $1,500 range, and that's a bare bow, but uh, they're pretty pricey. But again, it's like anything else. When you make the investment, you made something for a long time, and this bow's gonna stick with you. My dad had a carbon bow. He run over it twice with the uh, bad boy buggy and we come back broke his quiver off and went back and shot it, and it was still good i've seen him drop out of the tree i've seen everything happen but uh but anyway gonna pull this there look at here a little over i like this this is old morel target i don't even know if they make these but you can reverse the head from the the butt if you shoot one out he's already leaning he's about dead i believe going out here i had a 50 yard arrow and you might find, I, I tell you, when it starts getting into this time of year, I like to shoot at what I think is the uh, a, a target. Like, once I know I'm a bow sighted in, you know, after I shot dots, I like to shoot, you know, either cut out some deer or, you know, just, just the live, what, get used to holding on true deer. And then I always like to keep a few 3D targets out because I love, that they just give the realistic appearance of a deer, obviously and they're fun to shoot and um i'll tell you something else and i've covered it before one thing i always get used to doing when i shoot at a deer this is was about a 52 yard shot from where i was standing but if you ever see me shoot a lot of practice i always try to concentrate on the lower thirds because these deer will duck a lot um and if i concentrate on the top of the heart whether it's 20 yards or 50 yards, and then you start taking those longer shots, 50, 60 yards, concentrate on holding low and trying to miss him low, if anything. But what you'll find in a situation where the deer hear veins coming, they hear anything on a cold, crisp morning, they tend to drop. Typically, they can get anywhere from two inches up to six, seven inches. And so if you concentrate on aiming small on the lower thirds and either trying to shoot just under that deer or 90% of the times, if you're aiming in that hard area and you can hit in that softball size spot, you're gonna find that 99% of the time when you go back and look at that deer you just killed, cause you're gonna kill him, you'll hit him dead center of the body or right there in the top of the lungs. And you'll find if you have video evidence, that deer would have dropped at least 12 to 15 inches on you. So always hold lower thirds. I think you're just way better off and way suited. But um, I, I really enjoy, I really enjoy shooting my bow. It's fun. What I do like about these bows, once you get them sighted in, you get them rocking and rolling, they really do stick with you. And it becomes like riding a bike. And a lot of you guys uh, viewing it 
uh, I'll probably agree, but uh, it's fun. I'm gonna try to answer a few more questions, but I know you guys are there at work. Some of you guys are getting ready to get off work on a Friday, go to a high school football game. Maybe you, maybe you're going to a, uh, maybe you even going to a to the deer stand or hunting camp. But uh, let's see what else. Why do I shoot long veins? I'll be completely honest with you. The long veins, I always have shot the long, the shorter veins. One of my best friends in the world, Michael Pitts, he fletched these up for me. It was a vein that he was experimenting on. I'm not even sure the name of these veins, but they are a longer helical, a longer vein, obviously with pretty good helical on them. He fletched them up for me. I didn't even request them, but after shooting them, I really like them. I don't think they're probably necessary, especially with mechanical broadheads. I typically like a shorter vein, but my buddy Michael Pitts over there at Water Do Archery put these on there, and I like them. I like the yellow and white. There's my son Mason pulling up. He's out of school, ready to go to work at the farm, ready to do some work for Bone Collector, make it happen. But uh, that's the answer of that long vein. So uh, I, you'll find with me, I, I'm not like, T-Bone actually picks on me as well as Nick because I'm not like very anal about my setup. Um, I, I'm very bare bones. I'm even shooting this dead ringer sight, which is a, uh, it's just a typical five pin sight. I got it out to 60 yards. It's, it's don't have a lot of bells and whistles, no micro adjust. We call this a starvation bead. It's a very cheap sight, but really well built. I like it because it's, it's almost indestructible and it's very simple. Um, I don't shoot a wrist guard. I keep things as simple as I can. Um, and typically if I run into a little technical problems, typically mentally I try to shoot myself through it and try to get to know products, the good and the bad. So I wanna know from the bottom of the barrel price points to the top of the food chain and what you would pay what's the investment worth. And if I'm gonna um, be selling something that's gonna be high dollar versus even a lower do dollar item, I wanna kinda know the good and bad of it and be able to share it just like we're doing here uh, in a product review. Because, uh, man, we all work too hard for our dollars. Whether it's me spending money or you guys spending money, if we're gonna invest into it, that's taken away from our family. Obviously, hunting in so many cases, if you don't do it with your family, that's weekends you're not spending with your family. So if you do get that opportunity to close the coffin, you want the right equipment. So if you're gonna buy a bow like this, I think the consumer deserves to know the good and bad of it. The 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 good the bad in this, I haven't found it. Probably the only probably negative in into this as a product is it is pricey. It's not cheap. I think there's a lot of hunting product that's gotten too expensive. So when you make an investment in this Red Works, this Carbon RX1 bow, you're going to have to pull out your checkbook. It's something you got to save up for, but you're going to get a superior product. It's going to be the best in your business. You know, if you're going to be fishing for bass, you want the best reel. If you're going to be a, in a, in a tournament, you want a fast boat. You might going to look at those Rangers or those Phoenix boats, whatever it might be. Uh, no matter what it is, whether it's wakeboard or anything, you want the best that you can invest into. So uh, that's for me. And uh, I'll look and see if I got any more questions, but I know it's time to uh, get to rolling. I might even go to the stand this evening myself if I can talk my wife into letting me. Make no mistake, right here on live Facebook, I will tell you. I saw Michael Pitts do a thing, what you won't hear die hard hunters say things you will hear a grown man say that's in a marriage in a relationship especially with kids you might have good intentions of hunting this tonight or maybe saturday and sunday only if headquarters allows us i know i'm getting ready to go to kansas sunday and i'm gonna get to hunt hard for seven days it's part of my work god bless you guys for giving me the opportunity to do that but on a friday night oh why they might not get to try and climb up in the stand down here in georgia it might be old steak dinner. Spend a little time with the wife and kids. And so, uh, hey, we gotta do what we gotta do. You gotta pick your battle. In this situation, you gotta make mama happy. So uh, we'll see. I'll see if I'm granted permission. Like a lot of you guys watching this are thinking and laughing right now because you know you gotta call home and see if you can go. And then a lot of guys say, well, I ain't gonna ask. We know how that'll turn out. That woman will whoop you like a red-headed stepchild when you get home. But uh, just as usual, just wanna tell you guys how much I appreciate what you guys do and supporting what we do. Um, we are never a crew, a crew to tell you we know it all. We don't, we're just like you. We get new product and we want to try it out. We still get excited about it. I mean, T-Bone and I talked for an hour about this bow. Uh, Nick and I did as well, the excitement level. Uh, we just put tacticals on our bow, man. I'm excited because it gives us an opportunity to try to get some different angles as well as every time you have a cameraman with you, you can invest in that and you at least get your footage. Uh, of your deer kill but uh we just really appreciate everything and everything this industry has to offer and really appreciate the fact we get to hunt and fish 
and get to enjoy the great outdoors. So if you go out this weekend, wish you a lot of luck. The rut is on. Uh, it's been happening really tough here in Georgia. It's been happening. The deer have been cruising and running pretty good. Uh, it seems like they're starting to get locked down here in my area, the Piedmont area of Georgia, right here on the Alabama line. However, from all reports, I think it's just starting to get really rolling really good in Kansas. Uh, I think Iowa has been really good. The buck's been cruising. T-Bone was there the last week. Got a really nice poking young buck. Nick's been in Wisconsin. My dad and T-Bone were both in Missouri. So based on what it should be, I think it is in the positive uh, place where it should be as far as opportunity. So if you can get a little time off work and you're in the Midwest and you see that cool snap coming, now would be the time. Uh, you probably already planned on it, but now would be the time to go and take a little advantage of the opportunity because they only breed one time a year. These deer are fired up. They're ready to go. So good luck out there to everybody who's hunting. Thank you all for kind of looking at the first ever RX-1 Red Works Hoyt bow. If you're interested in it, make sure to go to your local pro shop and ask about it. And also, ask for the Bone Collector Edition. Snazzy. They look cool. The green and black with the real tree camo. You'll be rocking. If you're going to invest that much, you might as well have the best looking bow out there. Anyway, happy weekend. Happy rut. Love you guys.